when shall it be what shall be the sign of your coming and that was my prayer for many years and one of those days i had an encounter with jesus he came into my living room and when he came into my living room he he called me and my spirit left my body and moved with him to three places in Tivland. one of the places these are places where altars were erected altars were standing and I, the only I described one of the altars and I found out that that one is Jatoka, Jatoka. And he was destroying the altars, destroying the altars, destroying the things that was turning the heart of the people to idolatry uh, in order for him to establish the foundation for the move that was about to come. And uh, when we finished, we came back to Makati, came back to my sitting room and Jesus began to go. I said, ah, you have not finished the work. There's poverty in this land as long as there's poverty here. People will be tempted not to follow the way of righteousness. He turned back and looked at me for a few minutes and he said, If you trust in me, I will give you all things. That was what Jesus told me. And he walked away. We continued the inter That was a great encouragement because we prayed for a very long time. There was no word from God. There was no insight that came. And it was very difficult to continue until this encounter came. I wrote it down in my book that Jesus said he will give us all things. So part of what I knew that will be an indicator that we prove that this is the time that Jesus is coming. Is that he told me he will give us as a ministry all things. Everything we need to do, anything he has asked us to do, we will no longer toil for that to happen. So I waited for that sign. Because it's a big sign. It's, it's, a, it's an impossible expectation. Given the fact that um, we're in Benue State, we're not in one of the prime states. Uh, and the economy of this state has not fared very well under the previous government. So to expect that we will have full supply to prosecute the calling that God has given unto us corporately was a little bit outside of the box. Especially if you are a thinker like myself. And we waited for that sign to come to pass. And subsequently, after about seven years from that encounter, um, then prophecies began to flood again. When we started this ministry, there was no prophecy. So we increased the temple, the prayer temple. We increased it, intensified it. And a time came when it became, once in a while, we'll pick some feedbacks on the mind of God. Sometimes it comes as warnings to bring us back into alignment. Sometimes it comes as encouragement in order for our hearts to be strengthened in the conviction that the Lord has planted upon our soul. Sometimes it comes as things to watch for. And we continue with the navigation as the light of the Lord led us. The first symptom that this scripture that I read to us reveals that will characterize the season in which we speak about is the symptom i'm talking about the benway revival i don't know how it was it's designed to happen in quara state i don't know how it's designed to happen in lagos state but i've been a watchman in this territory for many years for more than 20 years so i think i have the right to speak at this time there was a sign that jesus gave Yes, for your information, Jesus appeared again, and he gave me six signs. Six signs. I will tell you the last one. I think you know that one. The last one was that the airport was going to work. You know that one. So all the six signs came to pass. And even though politically they want to shut the airport down, uh, it is still going to work again. All right? But God gave us that sixth sign. So from the moment I saw that sixth sign, I knew that revival was about to come. In the book of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11, we see the first symptom of what the move of God in this territory will look like. I hope you people remember the six signs that I have I've spoken about the six signs. I said that a time was going to come, there was going to be a flood, and the flood was going to be so intense, uh, such a flood that has never happened before in the city of Makodi. And it came to pass that the dam in Cameroon broke and River Benue overflooded its banks 
and it was a major issue in this town. That was one of the signs the Lord told me that will come to pass. He said, when that flood takes place, that we'll see some species of fish that we have never seen in the market before. And it was not only fish that we saw. Creatures, some strange creatures also came out of that flood. And it, it, it was a sign. Although people, some members of our fellowship were refugees, were victims of the flood. All right? But it was not designed to punish them. It's a sign. It's a sign that took place. And so the Lord gave six signs, and six of them came to pass. So we began to prepare to take our journey. So the, the regime, the regime of consecration, the regime of going to God to ask God, I hope I am still in alignment. I hope my heart is still chasing after you. Can you give me a sign to show me my scorecard so that I will not miss out on what you want to do. That regime of consecration began in 2017. That is in my own personal life. Alignment to see if I was chasing Jesus or chasing something else. It began in 2017. And in 2018, feedback began to come. Many encounters also revealed the kind of things that God wants to do. And God gave me um, a calendar to look upon. A calendar. That 23 years after the passing of Benson and Ahosa, that um, he would choose functionaries that would stand to man the gates of the territory of Nigeria. When he chooses them in the 23rd year of his passing, in the 25th year of his passing, which is two years from today, he's going to crown those that are faithful. So the process of replacement has been concluded. It's the process of empowerment, endowment, and licensing that we have entered into at the moment. And right now, the gateway is already open to begin to implement many secrets that God spoke a long time ago. However, it has been, we have not had license to declare them for the time has come. Salvation will begin to come into Nigeria from this moment. The things that have been deviled our nation are about to receive a punch from God. Let me limit myself to my constituency, which is Benue State. God will give us a sign, and the sign will begin from this year. The first symptom of the move of God that will erupt from this land is what we call an ingathering. The fire of God that will be rising from the heart of this land is going to attract so many people into the territory. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again a second time. The first time God set his hand it was what it was the day of Moses. But the Bible says God will set his hand again the second time. This is suggestive of an exodus. There's going to be a migration. People are begin are going to begin to hunger for God, begin to taste for God, and the old religion of Pentecostalism without glory. People will migrate in search of Shekinah illumination. And the Bible is saying that God will set forth his hand again the second time. The nature of God's sovereign activity will be a recovery agenda. Because the Bible says when he sets forth his hand again the second time, it is to re recover a remnant of his people. So recover them. So there's going to be a recovery initiative that is going to begin to take place in the lives of men. It, men will be called back to the place of alignment. And this recovery initiative is going to be so massive that it will begin to attract people into this territory called Benue State. There is going to be an attraction, an ingathering. People will be coming from different parts of the world to tap the fire of God from this land. And as the agenda of God grows in the land, 
God will begin to deliver our nation. I don't want to go into this, the national aspect of things. I just want to tell us what to expect in the days to come. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set forth his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria, from Egypt, from Patros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from China, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. First of all, I'd like us to tamper these scriptures with, with caution. All of those nation states that you are seeing there, um, Assyria, Egypt, I hope you know what he's stretching forth his hand to do, is to recover the remnant of his people. Those nation states you are seeing there are symbolic of denominations. That um, God has remnants in various denominations. And for those of you that understand what I'm talking about, you will know that the remnant factor is not a name of a ministry. It is a strategy of the Spirit. And the reason why God deploys the strategy of the remnant factor is because there are, there are valuables, inheritances that are in the body of Christ that generations tend to lose if our level of consecration is not consistent with that of the generation that procured and secured that inheritance from the heart of God, it is possible for such an inheritance to be lost in our land. For instance, there was a grace that was upon Benson Idahosa. That grace was not the grace of a preacher. It was a grace of, of a ruler. And that dimension of grace was to provide protection for the body of Christ in territories. So any time the body of Christ was experiencing hardship, persecution, if Idaosa is alive, the anointing that was upon him was the anointing of a protector. He had authority to speak against that which will fight the body of Christ and if he should decree it in judgment, heaven will take his words as law and will implement it. And it has happened again and again and again and again. But you see, when that man was taken from the scene, there was no one that had the heart he had and the stature he had. So that inheritance of God was withdrawn into the spirit realm. Not back to heaven, but in the spirit realm, floating. Until such a time where a generation that has the same kinds of passion for the body of Christ in the territory, the same kind of passion, for the purpose of God, for the entrenchment of the agenda of the kingdom of God. And what I'm talking about is not the success of a ministry. Because what it also did was much more than Church of God mission. Church of God mission was the least of what he did. So I'm talking about men that have been able to grow beyond the ministry that God has given to them. And they are trying to connect the linkages so that the kingdom of God in the terrain can be established. Over the years, after Idahosa's departure, the thing that we have seen is that pastors are comfortable with seeing their ministries established and growing. Meanwhile, the corporate agenda of the kingdom of God that is in line with the prophetic word for the nation in which that church is founded is suffering loss, but their ministry is growing. Oh, you are not with me. Let me explain to you. Let me explain to you. How many of you know bank, the bank? The banking sector is supposed to prosper according, it's supposed to look like the economy of the land. Are you with me? But the bankers have found smart ways of, of subverting the protocols and our banks are richer than the economy. The bank is supposed to be a product, an offshoot, a phalange of the economics, the economy of the landscape. If the, if the nation is poor, the banks are supposed to be poor. That's what I'm saying. But the banks have found how to become rich, even though the nation is poor. Huh? Are you with me? I don't want to go into that because some bankers are here, they might. So I'm saying that the, the ministries that are situated in the landscape are supposed to be as powerful 
as, as, as the profit that God is making from that territory. But we have a situation where we have ministries that are so massive and the agenda of God for the nation has suffered a 32 year loss. You know the meaning of that situation? Okay, you don't know. So let me leave you. You don't know. You don't know. It means that the church, our local churches, our denominations, have found another agenda, are pursuing another agenda that is not God's agenda. So in that agenda that we are pursuing, we, have, we are succeeding, but the agenda of God is failing. And the reason for which every ministry is established is to support the agenda of God. Every ministry is supposed to be a product of the agenda of God in the land. Did you get that? Alright, so that man had the grace upon him. And the grace that he had upon him was for the body of Christ on the continent. Anywhere there was a challenge to the body. He brought his superior authority on ground and heaven will honor. He, he, the grace on him had removed presidents and fixed up presidents. Uh, if he speaks, it comes to pass. That dimension of grace, the body of Christ didn't have the stature to hold it. Because the agenda we had was not consistent with the kingdom agenda. We were looking for ways to make our ministries prosper. And the average orientation of the preacher that comes into ministry at this time is to find how his ministry can prosper. And so we see ministries prospering financially, but the people that are part of the ministries are not disciples. It means that the influence of the king over the life of the members has not increased, but their finances have increased. So the ministries prosper at the expense of the purpose of God. So there was no way we could retain such territorial authorities, such territorial graces that manage the affairs of the Lord territorially because our heart is not on the Lord's business. Our heart is on our own personal. Because of this, there's going to be an exodus. There's going to be an exodus, not an exodus from Egypt to Canaan, but an exodus from bondage into the agenda of God. Because when he sets forth his hand the second time, is to recover the remnant what of his people. The remnant of his people happen to be those that are passionate about the things of God, even though the systems that they find themselves have no more value for the kingdom of God. God will do something sovereign in this scripture. He will stretch forth his hand. What? Again, the second time. Is so that he can recover the remnant of his people. This remnant of his people are the ones that are left in the denominations. So you might find someone that has a very passionate kingdom heart that is in your denomination. That person is not going along the tide of the main things that are happening there. He has a hunger for God beyond the activities that are situated within his own enclave. When God decides to stretch forth his hand this second time, it is not for the entire congregation. It is to recover what? The remnant of his people. And he will recover them from Assyria. He will recover them from Egypt. He will recover them from Patros. He will recover them from Cush. He will recover them from Elam. He will recover them from China. He will recover them from Hamath. He will recover them from the islands of the sea. So that's another aspect. The islands of the sea talk about nations that are beyond the sea. It means that there is something that God is going to do here that is beyond denomination. Beyond Elam. Beyond Patros. Beyond Egypt. Beyond Hamath. So people will begin to seek the face of God beyond the denomination. They want to know the agenda of God and how to fit into it. Because the sovereign hand of God will be unveiled to recover what? The remnant of his people. So the second symptom you are going to see. Are you here? So there's going to be a hunger. And very soon some, some pulpits will no longer be able to feed the people that are before them. 
because of that desperation, that, that lack of satisfaction, that is what is going to propel the exodus and the movement in search of glory. Mm. It's going to happen. In the, you will see it live. You will see it live. So a new kind of functionaries will of necessity be set up that can minister to the hunger of these traveling people. The counsel of God will begin to come forth in its freshness. The territorial shape of the body of Christ will be unveiled. And what God wants to do with his people across the territories will, become, will start becoming evident because he will begin to recover the remnant of his people. Hallelujah. Okay. The recovery doesn't only ex you know, exist denominationally. People are going to be connecting with God's agenda beyond the activities that take place in their own denominations. Something else will happen. God will also recover those that are from the islands of the sea. There is going to be an influx of people from different nations into this location called Benue State in mass. Not in search of agricultural products. Not in search of cassava not in search of the yam in your village, but in search of a move of God that is homegrown, a move of God that crystallizes from this territory. And men will come from the islands of the sea. He will recover them. So there are people that are right now in their closets. There are people that are frustrated and tired People that are waiting around the river for a stirring. Such people are going to receive attention from God because he's going to stretch forth his hand again the second time. There are a few things to expect here. First thing to expect is the level of the hunger is going to increase. Therefore, the ancient culture of intercession and supplication will be restored. There are so many things a preacher can tell you, but what a preacher can tell you will not be as the same as what Jesus can tell you. So, we are not going to outgrow the need for preachers, but even though we are, we have powerful preachers that can bring the mind of God, everyone is going to be taught how to seek Jesus. So the ancient culture of supplication, the ancient culture of intercession is going to be restored and prayer will come back again to the quarters where the eyes of the Lord is upon to build what will be befitting for his glory. Prayer will be restored. Now, I told you a few stories about the prayer group I was in while we were still on campus. And we began to push in the place of prayer, began to advance stuff in the place of prayer. And, and, and the, we, we, we discovered that God was actually delighted in that which we were doing. And because he was delighted, he began to speak to us. So the question now is, thank God for this, our little fellowship. Uh, but if if there are no spontaneous moments you know what I mean by spontaneous moments moments that the Holy Spirit hijacks our proceedings hijacks what we are doing penetrates our praise and worship takes over the service makes our program of service obsolete so that he can unveil his mind if those forceful, sovereign moments are not part of our, our apostolic experience, it might be suggestive of the fact that the glorious dove of the grace of God that comes to administer new things, new technologies out of heaven uh, might have flown away. When prayer begins to build, 
it means corporately we are saying we don't know the way we need God's help we need God's intervention and under such circumstances God normally intervenes sovereignly sovereignly we just come for a service a normal service and then the spirit of prayer comes so powerfully and you will know that what the Holy Ghost is doing that day is prayer there's something he wants to cut off even though you are a preacher for the night if you are sensitive as the prayer rises you will know that uh, you know in the days of Solomon the glory came so intense and the priest could not minister there are times when your own thank God for the message you receive by inspiration thank God for the prayer that you have prayed to incubate the message thank God for the potency of the delivery but there are such times when the glory of God takes over where your own ministry is dwarfed So many times when I come into our midst, I, I read the atmosphere. That day that Sister Jane, <laughs> come, come, do you know Jane? This is Jane. <laughs> come, come. Now you will not expect that. See how small she is. But that day she was a giant in the spirit. And I knew that God was at war. He, She's so gentle. So I know her. She's a gentle person. But what came upon her was not gentle. That thing was, was for war. So when I designed it, I said, ah, the great one wants to destroy something. There it is. And the great one wants to destroy something. And as we continue, and I, it was time to preach, and my pastor told me, uh, Oga, it's time. You, you know, there are times when your the program is dwarf. something that we did not plan is about to happen and the grace for supplication was so wild so strong and i was reading what was happening in the spirit oh those are the days when you will know how much you need the holy ghost for him to interpret to you what is beginning to take place in the realm of the spirit so that you will know how to take your journey because god may have suspended your program and he may do that for one week. He may do that for one month. If that level of flexibility is not available in the systems we are building, ah, the hunger of the people for reality we make them to go on a journey, on the exodus. So that's what this exodus is about. People's heart will begin to yearn for that which God is doing in their territory. People's heart will begin to desire for that which God is beginning to do in the land. And men will begin to journey. As powerful as Egypt is, it will not be strong enough to hold people that are traveling. Because it is the hand of the Lord that is set forth again the second time. And it was a war that night. As that lady was ministering that night, I saw it was a war. God was at war. God was, that's how seasons change. No season changes if there is no war. If you follow the move of God in an accurate fellowship, you will know when seasons are changing. Suddenly Satan will rise. His wickedness will intensify. And then, after a while, the Lord will rise too. You will see it. You will see that movement. And then when he clears the way, the new technologies, new things, destinies of men that have been shot, destinies of men that have been closed for long can begin to open god can begin to attend to things that have been silent for a long time because god works with seasons the bible reveals that for everything that god intends to do there is a season in god that is allocated to it and that's why you might be praying fervently expecting god to intervene and it is as though god is not attending to your prayer one thing you must understand is that his responses are consistent with seasons 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 do you know how long we prayed that oh god make our ministry grow oh father is it not written 
that in the multitude of people is the king's honor. <laughs> Jehovah! There was no prayer we didn't pray for growth. Instead of growth, we saw people leaving. Because when they came and saw the prayer temple, ah, they said, no. We have not so sinned so terribly that we need to be praying like this. I remember when we were on campus, one of my classmates said, What sin have you people committed? I saw you pray one prayer and you were doing like, ah! What sin have you committed? Mm. The response of the Lord was captured within a season. And that's why, for the Lord, what matters is will you be faithful? enough to arrive the season where the answer to your prayer is found there was a brother those days that was prophetic he used to give accurate prophecies and he gave a prophecy that time and before the prophecy came to pass he had backslid because even the fulfillment of that prophecy was captured within the season but he could not keep his life with the lord until the fulfillment of the thing that god has spoken has the lord spoken to you the answer is in a season. The question is, will you be around when he will bring it to pass? The prophet had backslid. Meanwhile, the prophecies he gave, they were like spirit-guided missiles, shot into the future. And they did not need him to help the management of those utterances. In the day of his fulfillment, he had backslid. Do you know what we did? We went and showed him his prophecy that had come to pass. That was what brought him back to the kingdom. We didn't preach to him because he's so knowledgeable. You see, on this day, you prophesy. May the Lord give us the capacity to stay faithful until we arrive the seasons where our prayers were programmed by his glory for manifestation. For it is written that it is the glory of the Lord to conceal a thing. And it is the honor of kings to search it out. I pray that kings will rise from among us. Such men that can search out the things that have been concealed by the glory of God. Hallelujah. So, these are the two signs. We are going to stop here because of the night vision. These are the two signs. If we have time, we will continue. What you see is the power of denomination. The power of the denomination. You will see it will weaken. This is, these are the days when God raises voices that can speak to nations, that can speak to kings. And then people will begin to see beyond their conclave and enclave. Oh, he will stretch forth his hand again the second time. These are the days of pilgrimage. Despite all the hurdles of COVID-19, you are going to see men leave nations in search of the true light that lightens every man that cometh into the world. And God, by his wisdom, told us many years ago that Benue State in the city of Makodi will be one of the stages that he was going to raise to converge nations. He told us it's about 23 or 24 years ago now. 24 years ago. So, as a roundup. If I have more time, subsequently, I will show us more from this scripture. Clues. But I came to herald the fact that the time is upon us. You know, Jesus spoke to me. He said to me, If you trust me, if you believe in me, I will give you all things. I didn't understand that. Until we wanted to build the embassy. Our account balance as a ministry was 12 million. We came to the site. We discussed what we wanted to build. All the engineers gave us all the intricacies that are involved. And we began to excavate. Lloyd the first um trench from that 12 million when we say we wanted to build 3 million came in 
it became 15 million. So the first amount of money we released was 15 million. The moment we released 15 million, a few weeks later, we got the 15 million back. Before they could finish spending the 15 million, we got another 15 million. And by the time they were coming to ask us for another 15 million, we had 30 million. So we gave them 15 million. Before they could finish that 15 million, we had another 15 million. And Jesus said, when he comes back, he will give us all things. So I said, hmm, is this the time that you spoke about? Well, we said, well, maybe it's a coincidence. They finished the other 15 million, and then we had 45 million. We gave them 15 million. And the supply was sustained for 12 calendar months. From June to June. Then I knew. And the time for the exodus has begun. The spirit of supplication will burn strong. All wise men should know that it is that which God has approved in the secret that he will promote in the open. Now a lot of people are, have their ministry on Facebook because it's about how many likes, how many views, how many... <laughs> and everything is a show. What God is going to promote is what has stayed hidden for a long time and it has fermented and matured. That is what he is going to promote. The Bible says that our God he is a God that sees in secret. However, when he rewards, he rewards openly. And when God wants a man to come out of obscurity, what he will do is that he will deposit authority upon him. When you speak to two women with five broad and they pass it out, you speak to the third one with five broad, she passes it out. You speak to the fourth one with five broad, you pass it And I spoke to Asma. I said, Asma, hear me. In the name of Jesus, come out of the lake. She fell and began to cough. And I told the congregation, this is when you are this is a sign that we spoke to us man he heard you this thing you are seeing now they say, hey. i said all right leave her she left instantly she was healed she followed me to the next meeting and i was talking about her testimony and i now saw her in the commission i called her so tell us what see a, a young man from africa everywhere we went people followed us the deaf could hear the blind could see in fact i came for one meeting and as i rebuked the demons i saw old people were possessed old people were possessed old an old woman old people had demons so how long are the demon tabernacle there my question to you today is do you have any secret thing with god if you don't have any secret thing to God, there will be nothing for him to display in the open. Everybody wants to rush into the open as if it is it's a human being that can give you visibility. If you have no backbone in the secret, God will have nothing to advertise. Oh, we moved to London and I was on the pulpit like this and I saw a spirit come out of the water and put the hands on the waist, like this. Ah, I say, oh, this is London. But I see a spirit <laughs> come out of the water. And I hope you know they won't believe me. When I release power, the people that manifested were not supposed to manifest. Not the... ah. Guess where I practice all those ones? It's in the manger. Until I mastered it. I understood the texture of the anointing. I understood the texture of the voice of God. When God speaks to me, when he wakes me up in the morning and says, Beware. I have known it. People were amazed as we rebuked the water spirits. And those destinies were open. We saw organs healed. Bodily organs. Healed.
a new season has opened for us. The Lord has promised that his power to heal will be so much among us. Hallelujah. We went to Ghana, to the northern part of Ghana. That's, that's a place where even and the average Ghana preacher is not likely to go to, to preach because of how entrenched it is in darkness. And when we came to the place, the Holy Ghost told me, salvation. What he was saying was, keep your message. These people need salvation. So when I gave an altar call for people to give their life to Christ, the response was massive. So massive. After we did that, then we started breaking yokes. Demons were speaking through people and asking me what I was doing there. Demons were talking through people's vocal cords. Now, you see, if you don't have training with Jesus in the background, you enter into some fields, you will come down. These are the days where God will showcase the things that he has been incubating in the secret place, in the hideout. The Bible says our God is a God that sees in secret, but he rewards how openly. We were driving out of the arena of the meeting uh, on was it saturday night sunday night and i saw a woman close to our car the Holy Ghost said call her so I, called. I told the driver wind down and I, I put my hand like this the moment she touched the hand i said touch it If you don't know how the Holy Ghost moves, if you do like this, <coughs> we are going to pray tonight. You will not waste your, your silent years. Your silent years are the strong years. Those are the moments where you cut covenant with God. And when you stand on the platform 10 years later, what will power that platform will be the covenants that you caught with God in the days of silence. Don't waste it. Demons and devils will visit you and say you are wasting. You are wasting time. You should have been on the front lines. Let me tell you something. I was just, this is my classmate in the university. We were discussing. One of our classmates, he just met him. The degree he went to get from this school. And he added masters. He has not worked with it since that time. And we are above 40. We are. He's still looking for a job. That's a man that missed his way. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He's still hunting for a job. If only he can secure the heart of God, maybe he will realize it was not the plan of God for him. Your secret is holds all the powers of the covenant that will trigger your destiny. It holds all, all the powers of the commitments from the mouth of God that will become a springboard in the days to come. Oh, the most intelligent student in our class that time is a lady, very sharp. I saw her many years ago. The race is not to the swift. And the battle is not too strong. But this is a story I can tell you that is reliable. If you waste time with God, you will not waste time with men. Something is upon us. And our land is about to experience a visitation. History will be made upon our borders like it was made in Jerusalem when Jesus walked among the sons of men. History will be made in our little city and our little city will become a center of attraction the eyes of many people will look into our little city because god is bringing a visitation into our land 
he will set forth his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people i will not miss that day i will not be excluded from his agenda my name will not be deleted it will not be blotted out oh i want to be in the forefront of what god will do just like elijah he molded an anointing so much that heaven man called the name of the anointing elijah uh, they all the dimensions of the empowerment that the anointing brought he maximized it to his fullness so much so that he the anointing man got a nomenclature the anointing was called elijah and the book of malachi the bible says behold i will send elijah he didn't say the spirit he said i will send what elijah he was talking about an anointing but he, he said he called the anointing elijah i want to model the grace of god so powerfully that 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 god will have to say i will send a roman come <laughs> here The time has come for God to have spokesmen for kings again, like He had in Idahosa. That people will invite to nations to give direction to kings, to senators, to people that craft laws, to provide platform for the things that God wants to do in their nations and in their territories. The season changes from our normal charismatic churches to something that is very apostolic. That has the authority to entrench God's purpose in a territory. Oh, I, I want to model an anointing. I want to model the grace so powerfully and advertise his powers and his ability to establish the will and the purpose of God so that the anointing will be named by my name. Can we pray tonight? Don't waste your secret years. Don't waste your time in oblivion. Don't waste your time in the shadows. Because the Bible says that God, even though He sees in the secret, He will reward openly. A time will come when you call out from your closet, many nations will answer you. Many nations will answer you. Many kings will answer you. Many nobles will answer you because of the depth, the depth of your foundation, the depth of that which is coming through your life, the depth of that which flows in your ministry. The Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria. He set his hand before and he will set his hand again. It means there is one from among us that will wear the cloak of Moses. is about to be born. God is set again. Oh, 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 oh,
of Patras and from Cush and from Elam and from Shina and from Hamad and from the islands of the sea.
when shall it be? What shall be the sign of your coming? And that was my prayer for many years. And one of those days I had an encounter with Jesus. He came into my living room. And when he came into my living room, he, he called me and my spirit left my body. And moved with him to three places in Tivland. One of the places, these are places where altars were erected, altars were standing. And I, the only, I described one of the altars and I found out that that one is Jatoka. Jatoka. And he was destroying the altars, destroying the altars, destroying the things that was turning the heart of the people to idolatry uh, in order for him to establish the foundation for the move that was about to come. And uh, when we finished, we came back to Makati, came back to my sitting room, and Jesus began to go. I said, ah, you have not finished the work. There's poverty in this land as long as there's poverty here. People will be tempted not to follow the way of righteousness. He turned back and looked at me for a few minutes, and he said, if you trust in me, I will give you all things. That was what Jesus told me. And he walked away. We continued to enter. That was a great encouragement because we prayed for a very long time. There was no word from God. There was no insight that came. 